when we move to the right understanding that of the samaditi, what we're trying to become aware of are what we call the three characteristics of existence. Ti lakana, a characteristic or a sign. Three signs of being, three characteristics of existence. And these are anicca, dukkha, anatta. Nietzsche means permanent. In Pali, if you put an A in front, that's negative. So, not permanent. We're trying to become aware that everything is impermanent. To begin with, we can try to understand this on an intellectual level. We can read, uh, read books that talk about the universe and how everything in the universe is, is either growing or collapsing. It's exploding or changing in one way or another. The universe, although we look up at the night sky and see all these stars, look pretty well fixed. Actually, there is huge change. The universe is a very violent place. And that factor of change, of course, goes down even to the subatomic level, where all these bright physicists are talking about the constituent um, elements or particles, the elementary particles which make up atoms. And all of those, we're told, are in a constant state of movement and change. So from the very big to the very small, there is change. The Buddha said that all there is is arising coming to be and uh, dissolution. Nothing lasts for longer than a split second. There's nothing within us, nothing around us, nothing outside us, which you can point to and say, this endures. It doesn't. We may get the, we may form the impression that it does because we can't actually perceive the change with our own naked eye. But there is change going on. And this is one of the, this is, this is a constant in a world of inconstancy. This is the one constant factor change, change, change. We don't normally see that, but it is there. And we can, we can learn about this, we can read about it, we can look at other forms of knowledge which explain this to us. We would call that a kind of second-hand knowledge. Uh, knowledge that comes to us from outside, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not... It's the lowest level of understanding. When we start to examine something and think about it, and we deepen our knowledge, deepen our understanding, that is a, a better form of wisdom. But the best form of wisdom comes from direct experience. And in the practice of meditation, we are using our body and our mind as a laboratory. We are, we are observing what is going on 
from moment to moment in the body or in the mind. We can't be aware of everything simultaneously. But with development of this practice we call meditation, we can begin to get direct experience of change. There is uh, uh, a remark made by one of the Buddha's nuns when she became enlightened. She said, the world is nothing but vibration and combustion. Nothing lasting. Nothing permanent. Vibration and combustion. And she reached this on the basis of her own personal investigations. Not because she was told it by the Buddha or anybody else. She had looked into the matter and she had come to this understanding by just observing. So that's the highest form of understanding. And that is in fact the experience of enlightenment. But before we get quite that far, Anicca is the first of these three characteristics. It's the easiest one to experience directly. So that is where the practice uh, focuses, to becoming aware of impermanence. But then that leads on to dukkha. Because the Buddha said, yada nichang tad dukkang. Whatever is impermanent is also dukkha. Why did he say that? Because if something is impermanent, it must be, in the ultimate sense, unsatisfactory. It can't give us permanent happiness. So whatever is impermanent is also dukkha. We're not going to get freedom from dukkha by clinging on to things which are always changing. If we try to do that, I hope we're going to build up problems for ourselves. We're going to build up disappointments and frustrations and other difficulties. So that is the connection between impermanence and dukkha. And impermanence also helps us to get insight into the third of these characteristics, anatta. There was at that time the word Atman. Atman was said to be something permanent, something eternal within us. You can call it a soul, or the self, the Atman was not destroyed at death. The Atman continued on to another state. And many religions teach a soul which continues on after death. There is room for differences of teaching. Some religions teach that after death the soul goes to a permanent place of happiness or unhappiness, to heaven or hell. Other religions say no, the soul puts on another body, like you put 
a new set of clothes onto your body tomorrow from the ones you're wearing today. And this process may continue, but eventually the soul is, we hope, going to experience some kind of eternal happiness. But the Buddha said, no, no soul, no Atman. Before we get deeper into that, would anybody like a cup of tea? <laughs>